This is the link, by the way, if you guys are. Okay, the link. This uh, fulfill the user is below. User story one is I can create the recipes that I have names and ingredients. I can see the index. I can see click on the recipes to view, edit, delete all the recipes. Blah blah blah. Okay. Uh, let's start with that. <clears throat> so basically, what is saying key? When I click that, it should have entered. And how do, if I have add, I should open a model. And if I have something here. Should open that. Okay. Okay. Looks good. Um. I'm creating the old file so. And Nick JS is usually the remain the same because you are just taking the parent element and you know. Uh, putting for the rendering for DOM. So this is simple and this is the same. And we st we're going to start writing from app.js basically. Okay. So let us first analyze what all this problem needs. Okay. So basically it has this list of elements. So at the start there is nothing. Okay. They, this will be empty. And when you click add receipt, a model should appear and it will have two states, recipe and ingredients. Type uh, something in my recipe and type something uh, ingredient and say add recipe, add recipe. That it's going to it's going to store these two values in the state. Where is the state? Uh, it's going to store that in the state and going to display a list. Simple. So. Uh, bootstrap in React. Okay, uh, you can use normal Bootstrap in React, but um, if you see Bootstrap, by far is more verbose. You have so many class names. You have to remember which class name and which what is a button. So, just a wrapper on all that Bootstrap is something called React Bootstrap. Bootstrap. So this uh, is a wrapper. It's a React wrapper around the bootstrap. So instead of, uh, I'll show you the both methods. Okay. So this is the code. Okay. And button code is here. Okay, it started. This button. Components. Mm. Yeah, there is a button score there. Button. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you see, um, there are two approaches. You can either use directly import the style sheet of Bootstrap and use this normal button style, and to do that, for in this particular example, if you're using even Bootstrap, both of them are pretty much the same. You have this button component and you have you're passing that as a prop BS style and primary. Here instead of doing that you're saying button type is button, class name is you know this particular big thing and then this thing. So um, this what this React Bootstrap does is it hides a lot of uh, complexity from the bootstrap. It creates a, a wrapper around it. So you just say you just call the button which you import from the React Bootstrap, and you say it has to be primary, and that's it. We'll take care of that by the Bootstrap. Okay. So to okay. install any other uh, any other library in React, you either do yarn or do npm install. So let me go ahead and npm install this time. So I'm going to install npm install and save it to my dependencies as a React Bootstrap. And till that time, I have to uh, also add the style sheet, the CSS style sheet, which I, which the bootstrap has. So let me put this thing. This is the style sheet which which I want to be appended to my head of my HTML tag. So let me go and find the index.html, and I'm going to put this over here so that the style sheet is global. Okay, 
I can even if I you even if I don't uh, if I don't import style sheet over here, uh, it will just work because I have the style sheet in my head tag of my HTML. Okay. And um, okay, let's see if that's installed. Okay, that's installed. Whenever you are, we have installed a new package, it's a good idea to again start the application okay, by doing yarn start. Okay. Now let's let's look at this API. Component. Okay. Let's see what that was I think that was overlay. Okay, we have model class over here. Okay, so this is this will allow us to control the model on and off to show the model and don't show the model. So is it installed? Okay, say yarn start because I've installed a new model. I have to. And this is not hot loading because um, uh, if you have installed a new package, it has to be uh, the the complete uh, browser dot uh, the bundle of JS has to again compile to include those new additional files which you have just uh, installed. Need this? I don't need this. Okay. Okay. Migrate component. Okay. This should be okay. Hmm. I have nothing over here. But for now, hello. There. Okay. Now let's start uh, building the components. So this is called. Uh, this is a model component. The way they show for it to act is. It should have a model dot dialog, then model dot header, everything. What I'm writing, what I'm trying to do right now is create this particular model box. Okay, so this is the model. Basic. Okay, this is the big model and. I'm going to make a new component, basically. It will just have my model code. Model.js. And this time, I'm also going to import model from Bootstrap. So I'm going to import model from React to Wrap. Now I'm going to have a class. Name is model. And to extend it with the React dot component class. And I want it to render anything, render something. So I'm going to call the render method there, and this render method will return me right now just a simple model. Just, just to make sure everything works, I'm going to import this in my app.js and see if it is getting entered. Model from I'm going to insert this model here. Class model declarative model. Okay, I cannot have uh, same name for class and also same name for the component. So basically, I have to rename this class to as uh, I don't know, add, add new. Seems okay. Add new, and say this as add new. Export is not there on the default. I forgot the export. So I'm going to export it like this. Default add new. 
okay now my component is exported and it is rendering that's fine so <clears throat> let us get this uh, model from here and let's display this model shut off just random text And let me see this API. So uh, the mo this this API this API has props called show, and it is something called unhide. So what are those? To see that, if you go to the props meaning of them, model is there, right? Okay. So model is on show is a boolean value. That means uh, if I put true, then the model will show itself. Okay, let's try this. I would show and equal to true. Uh, model should show. Okay, model is showing. Because there's nothing, it's just getting rendered like this. Great. So, show is working. Now, let me add a lot of stuff here so that we can make basically a form. Okay, now. To look at the form, we have bootstrap forms. Go to form. You have this simple form for. That's it. I think this is this should be good. This should be good. Text form, yeah. Okay, so basically, I have to use something called form, form group. If I have two or uh, two or more forms, two or four control elements, and something called control form, control form is nothing but the input box basically. So let us um, import this. A form control, form control, and I'm going to render that inside the model. So I'm going to put that as a child of model and put it as form control. And as you see, it has few props which uh, we have to pass to it. It says you have to specify the type. Um, let me close this, then we can open later on. And I'm going to open this. Okay. This is nothing but the same thing I've done. I just I can write it over here or can I can put it to a new line. So, but I like putting it in a new line. And this uh, form has to be of type uh, text because we are we are going to put ingredients there. And let's put a placeholder. Place full rage cam no it's small. Full rage small. It's a string. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put enter uh, enter um res what is spelling it? E C I E P I don't know what is that. E C I P E. Okay. Recipe name. Good. Um let's see if this thing can rendered. Yeah, enter recipe name. We can enter. Okay, we need one more uh, form control there. If you have more than two form control, it's best to put it and a form group. That's why your whole form is you know one form, not two different forms. So before that, I have to I think import it from the model uh, from the React Bootstrap library. I'm going to import it as form loop. Okay, that's correct spelling, I guess. Okay, and form group. Does it have a value? But I don't think we need validation right now. So let's skip that. And form uh, control has to come inside form group. So I'm going to close this form group after the form control. It's just something like that. And it, it works too. Okay. Now next would be, uh, I think the next also would be a text element because ingredients here. So let's put the same thing. But here, let's say, Enter recipe, enter recipe, that's it. Should be okay. So, enter recipe name and the recipe, as you know, it just looks quite ugly because we have to put 
lot of things there to get styling. Let's do that now. Mm. So here it says, this is there. And code to do that, I have to Yeah, there is one more thing in uh, in React. You can uh, it is similar to HTML inline styling. You pass uh, as usually you would pass, for example, if you want to pass to an image. You would usually directly make a style object and pass right in uh, HTML. So the same thing also is there in React. You can pass on if you want to pass on directly styles to this particular component. You can make a prop called style. And here the CSS is, is camel cased. It's not, not like a font size. It's not something like this. It says uh, something like font size. So it's you remove those uh, uh, hyphens and put and replace it with the capital letters of the next uh, next name. So I'm going to put a padding around it. I'll put a padding of I don't know padding. I'm going to say volume. Hopefully, this should look good. OK, it did make that bigger. I'm going to put a margin. I don't think I need bigger. I think the case is fine. But I think the, uh, there's a prop for making it bigger, I guess. I don't know. Instead of writing that, I don't think it has a prop. Control, yeah, it has a prop called uh, BS size. So instead of putting that, I can directly so putting a padding, I can directly put BS size here. And put one of those that is large, small, and I'll put large. And paint this to margin. Good, but it's going out of the way. Margin going out of the way. Third, margin bottom instead. Hmm. Okay. And now the same prop. I'm going to pass it here. I'm going to put it look the same. Good. And the recipe. And let's see how this. What it does is it has something called recipe name on top. So to do that, uh, we have something called form control. It's called control label. Here it is. So let me see how this is implemented. Mm. OK, here it is. So basically, you again bring the form form control from bootstrap. Control, form control. Control label is called, OK. Control label. Great. Now, um, this guy, uh, it stated that if you're using control label, then you have to make this particular form inside one more form group. Right, because now you have because we don't know, uh, this uh, component will not know for which form control that is. It can be either for this or either for this, right? So it's a good idea. Make two form groups, OK? One form group for the recipe name, and one form group for this, and wrap it all inside HTML element form. And let me put control label now. It's a control label. Yeah, yeah. Let me put it above this. Control label. Okay. Now let me see the props for that control label. It is just inside that you have to pass. Okay. Let's say recipe. Hey. Hmm. 
Okay, there you go, that's the name. Good. Now I'll do the same thing for the P called what? Called ingredients, okay. Pass ingredients. Let's see, ingredients here too. Okay, so recipe name and ingredients. Cool. Okay, <clears throat> now uh, this model has this um, cool padding all around it. All, all okay, this has this if you model title and model. I mean, this has everything defined it. So let's use the same thing. So to do that, uh, what we have to do is we have to instead of using just model, you have to put a you have to use model dot dialog to be able to get this uh, this structure with the heading, the body with two buttons. So, wait me just a minute. Okay. I'm charging. Okay. <clears throat> to do that, uh, because this is model dot dialog, that means uh, I've already imported model here. So that means model dot anything will import it automatically. Okay. So I don't have to again import model dot dialog here instead of putting this and say model dialog. I don't have to do that. I'm already importing complete model there. So input this complete thing and this let's edit this according to our wish. And the props for that model okay model and it has to go inside model or title title I do something here Go there, okay. It goes there. Then I have to put this side model dot body. Model dot body. This form has to go inside model dot body. Model dot uh, body. All capital body. Put this form inside this. That. Good. It has it's giving us some padding already. I don't think I need this margin. Hmm. Okay. Now I need I need also uh, there also do one two buttons here, and two buttons goes in model dot footer. Let me add that. With cap. I probably write something here. Let's see if that comes there. Okay, it comes here. So instead of this, I would want to have a button here, right? So we can import bootstrap buttons as two of these buttons here. And Me, oh, let me have green button for success. I don't know, primary would be good. So, you see, it's just simple as putting BS primary and this. I'll just copy over here, copy that, and when you put this over here and put uh, save instead of primary, let's see what it shows. So, oh, seeing that button is not defined. Is saying that because I have used a button component here, but I've I, but React will is will not know what this button is until you actually import it from. So I have to go ahead and add this to the list of imports I'm doing from React Bootstrap, and add is that button. Yeah, save is here. Okay, it doesn't work right now because we have not added any event to it, but we will. 
Okay, so let me see if we have to do the same thing. Add the recipes there. Recipe. Good. And what else do we need to add? We have already done model, I guess. Okay, model is done. And I think we probably have to put it under the header instead of that to be able to get that margin right now because you're not getting the margin. Put that into the header. Model dot header. This will, as we have model dot body, model dot footer, same thing as model dot header, and we'll pass in model dot title. Okay, so this is almost same, but I don't think we need large. It's too big, man. Um, okay, this is this is good. But this probably we would need a text. We would not need a text. We would probably need a text area. If you know HTML text area, uh, it is same here. Uh, we just use a different type instead of putting text. As we can put text area, I think it should work. Let me see how the API is. Forms, I need not need this. I need um, area, so text area. So for, all, for that, I need to have Achha, it has to be as component class equal to text area, not type as text area. I'm going to put this there. Remove this type now. And put common text area. Okay, good. Because ingredients can be many. So, okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, let's take a moment here. And are you guys following? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me drink. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have made a model. Uh, we have we have not added any listeners to it. What will the button do? All. So to control this, <clears throat> so I don't have a checkbox also here. Uh, let's see if we have a checkbox from the API, or we probably have to build that. Mm. Model should have a checkbox, I guess. Mm. On exit is there, on hide is there, or back when okay, doesn't have it. Probably have to put a put a button altogether. Okay, let me get one more button. This time this should be cancel. And obviously I don't want it to be uh, uh okay. I don't want it to be primary because not a primary function, but default. So default doesn't have a prop. Uh, so I just have to remove this prop. I remove this prop from the button. So it will get rendered as, as okay, makes sense. OK. <clears throat> now, let's attach event listeners to this object. OK. See, in, um, for that, I have to first make a constructor. Um, let me have this something like this. I think that is the most convenient. Yeah, this is. I will close this one. Okay, <clears throat> so this up. So for this, uh, for for me to be able to read any values which the user have typed in, store them, store the values as a state, right? So, and also. Uh, so to do that, I have to first declare a state in my constructor. Okay, so this is um, just be along for a while. I'll be creating a constructor. Constructor, okay. And I'm calling super 
because I want to have access to the super methods which are there in react.component class. Okay. So super. Okay. Now if I want to pass an if if this add new component will have props, then probably I want to pass those props there in the component for my you know inside the rental body if I want to if you want if I want to have access to those props. Okay, so let's create two states, one for the recipe name and other one for ingredients. So I'm going to create a state. Now remember, I will not create two different state. Okay, although it will be two different state, but I will pass in the same object of this dot state. Okay, so if uh, probably if I do something like Let's see P name and give it something like this. Then I don't need to do it again for recipe ingredients. Okay, whatever. I don't have to do this. I can I can combine those into one state because all I'm doing is I'm all the state is doing is taking an object. So I can always do this. And this will not change the thing. Okay, but I but I don't have to access. I can access this recipe name all separately by just calling this dot state dot recipe name. That's it. Okay, I don't have to always call this uh, those two states simultaneously. I don't have to do that. So so yeah, <laughs> at the starting uh, recipe name again should be empty. Okay, now let's see what happens if I start typing. Can still type, but am I getting? I have not yet attached this particular state to the input of this, right? So to do that, I have to tell my component that go ahead, take the state, uh, take the uh, take the things which are returned in this particular state. Then that is how it's going to attach to that particular state. So inside my Control. Yeah, this is the this is for this is the recipe name. So I'm going to pass it a value, and value would be this dot state dot recipe name. I guess. Okay. So now what I've done is I've told this particular component to take the values. From recipe name state. Okay, so now what to do is, is see I'm I'm typing, but I'm but nothing is actually going over here. Why? Because I what, essentially what I've told key, I'm going this I'm not going to take any other value except for this for this recipe name. And right now the recipe name is empty, so obviously I cannot type anything over here. Whereas I can type something over here because I've not yet attached that state to this value of the recipe ingredients. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we deal this deal this problem? So we have to attach it a uh, event again at event listener that will take the input from the user keyboard and update the recipe name. Make sense? So basically, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is, you have to have an on change listener attached to this particular component, and that on change listener uh, taking whatever event is uh, whatever that event is being uh, fired. Those values it has to add to the recipe name, so that it starts showing key. Okay, now my keyboard, my recipe name box, and my state all are all three are all are linked properly. So uh, let's do this. Let's say on change. I'm going to add a on change listener to that because on change because this is the correct because this I will always be changing because that is the correct event listener I would I should have. So if I have a on change, then I'm going to say obviously an event listener has to have a callback, right? So how do you how do I deal with this callback? So let's let's first give it a function, okay, and 
let me define that function over here. You can just say that handle change for okay, this is going very big handle uh, handle change or okay anyway press C P name. If this is the function I'll probably give. And this, if I have this function here, this function I'll attach to this on chain so that every time I, I type something on the keyboard, this uh, function would, should get called. So this I'm going to give as anonymous function because anonymous function give us uh, better control over the callbacks. I'm going to put give anonymous function here. And now I'm going to, okay, how, what should I, what should I get from this? Okay. So the value from the keyboard is usually captured through event dot target dot value. Okay. Now let me attach that function here. Uh, this because the function is this under this particular scope and just say handle change for SAP name. Unexpected use of events. Okay, I have not passed this event in my function. Okay, good. Now let's see what happens. I'm just logging in here so that you can see you. See, so it is taking only one letter, right? It is taking one letter from my keyboard and just showing that letter. So basically, what I'm trying to do is, uh, whenever I, I whenever I press A, A is printed, capital A, capital A, capital A, capital A. Okay. So this is a series of letters which I have to start appending to my state over here. Recipe name. Okay. So to so that, I have to do this. I have to call this dot set state. And pass just as if name and event dot target dot value. Okay. See, I can start writing, and if you go to React DevTools, I'll, you can see the state also getting changed. So, this is the adding state, right? Okay, I'll just render it once again. Okay, so as expected, states initially are empty. Ingredient, recipe ingredients and recipe name are both empty. Now, as when I start writing in recipe name, the expected behavior should be that recipe name should also start filling up. Okay. So, see? Now, there's one more thing. Because I have not attached the ingredients, the, the state ingredient is still empty. So, probably I have to attach that too. Good. So, let's go ahead and quickly attach that. Put a value to it. And say it should be this dot state dot what is the name? Recipe ingredients. Okay. SCP ingredients on change. Um, change to it, and I'm going to declare it right here. I'm going to call it handle change for SAP name and also an in ingrate. Ingrate, that's fine. In and I'm going to define this function here. Remember, this is the callback method. That's why I have an anonymous function here. Event. Because let's start. See. Um, should be event dot target or value. 
<laughs> if you see, even though I'm I'm putting that in the single object in my constructor, I'm I'm using two different switch state to state values. It's perfectly fine. The switch state is I'm just here over here. I'm just up, updating recipe name. Over here, I'm just updating the recipe ingredients. So look at this and state is here. Let me see. The name gets filled. I said the ingredients get filled. Now, once I have this in my state, I can always pass this to another object or you know do whatever with, what I want with them. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to we have this show as true, right? So let's change this. When I click save, let's change this value. Okay. So for that, I'm going to have this thing called is model showing. Okay. Probably this at the beginning, you obviously want to put it false, and whenever user clicks add new SAP, then you just true. So right now, let's put it true. True. And I'm going to change this to take a state instead of hard code variable. It dot is model showing. Okay, but by default the state is true, that's why the model is showing. Ha! Huh. Let's come here and Let's imp implement cancel for them because save probably you have to state those, those two state variables and do something with that. Okay, so let's implement cancel button on click listener. So I'm going to put on click on that and create a new function. And this dot cancel click. Now I'm going to define a new function here and say cancel button is clicked. What should I do with that? I don't have any parameters here to pass on. I'm just going to say no. Just switch the model showing to false. That's all you do. That's it. OK, <clears throat> so by default, model showing is true. When I click cancel, model showing is false. And because model showing is false, this whole model is not shown. OK, any questions till now? Uh, yeah, I have got one. Yeah. Uh, at this, if you, can you show the model? Uh, once again, you like this? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, uh, when you enter something in recipe name, oh. and when you uh, remove it, you can use the backspace. Yeah, let me show you that for you. And uh, I like yeah. there are a yeah. few a few shortcuts like uh, uh, double clicking double clicking on the uh, text tab the text and the entire text is highlighted then if i do a backspace the entire text is removed at once okay tab here is going to the other form no no just yeah yeah by, by doing a backspace in this case uh, the entire text is removed okay yeah entire text is removed how is this being handled like uh, here what we are doing is uh, we are just removing one one character every uh, single character right but here this side huh. and, and how it is being done so uh, the way it works is um, see uh, this is still an html form yeah okay just that we are wrapping it under this form control okay, okay? there are two ways uh, in input, I mean, that was the thing with the input thing. So how did they implement input? Uh... And body and form. The form. OK. And this is the text area. 
So uh, the way it is, they, they do is, if you write traditional input element in HTML, okay, you can still write and delete everything, right? You yes. can still write and delete everything. So the browser actually maintain the input element maintain its own state. Okay. See if you if you remove on value over here and if you on value over here, mm -hmm. okay. I can still write, right? Yeah. But where am I writing this? I'm writing that inside the input tag state. Yes. In this React has nothing to do with it. Huh. In this case, you are writing it into the state and then that state is being outputted. Yeah. But so but you are writing it one character at a time. Yes, I'm but I'm appending it right here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Here. No. I'm appending it over here. No, no, the question, my, my question is not writing. Writing, I understand. Removing it, removing it at one ah. character is fine, but removing entire thing, like I, I feel that we are restrict, restricting the current functionality. Huh. So when I selected the complete element, yeah. the, the value inside the input element was removed. Okay. Got it. So they are. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is this is actually input functionality altogether because they wanted the input to handle its own state. Okay. I mean HTML. Mm -hmm. HTML. they wanted because uh, this came later on. But before, my people using with directly with HTML and they were just to this value, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Got it. And uh, can I? There is one more thing I had. Like here, what we are doing is uh, we are appending. So uh, when I this from the input tag and, and the value both are linked, then the state is up, and then you see nothing is there. Yes, yes. This is how the it flows. Okay, okay, got it. One more question I had: at the yeah. current approach, what we are using is first uh, whatever you are typing is going yeah. to be appended into the state, and then that state is displayed in the uh, in the element. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Can can I like uh, there is one more approach which I had in mind. I don't know. I am not sure if it is possible. I'll just tell you. Hmm. Like I instead of uh, appending uh, whatever I'm typing. Yeah. After the state is appended, uh, hmm. we are displaying it into the element tab. Instead of yeah. uh, doing that, can I uh, fill the element tab? And then on change of this element tab, I'll uh, I'll uh, remove whatever is there in the current state, and then mm -hmm. append the entire text. Uh, okay, is that possible? Okay, uh, let me uh, see if I got the question correctly or not. So I was saying initially I should have something, right? Initially this should be filled. Uh, no, no, not like that. Uh, uh, uh. So what I'm telling is you're appending one character at a time, right? Instead of appending one character at a time, uh, the entire text from the element and then appending the same thing to the state. OK, so you're saying instead of appending one character at a time, uh, append the entire state into it. But yes, you can still do it. Uh, for example, okay. if I copy localhost here and I paste it, Yes, yes. So it is uh, it is now now is now not the full element, but this is taken care by the target. You have event dot target dot value that is taken care of that. So it, it really doesn't matter if you are writing one character or copying okay. the complete thing. Okay, okay. Because okay. the target dot value contains can be a character or a string. Okay, okay. So it, this thing can contain anything. In case the entire thing will work and one character. Thank yeah. You. Okay, okay. Yeah, it will work. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That is all. Okay. Yeah. Um. So we were in. Uh, yeah. Cancel was working. Good. Uh. But we are not able to get it back. Let's see how to do that. Now let's. Uh, before going, let's go back to this and see what all we need to implement. Close was there. This close also here. So let's see. So. Uh, we need to have uh, a state where all of these are getting stored, like all these things are getting stored. Let me see how we do. How, let, let's see how we do. Uh, 
Um, let's have, uh, and I want a good element here. Mm, great layout, no navigation, no overlays. Okay. I should have an accordion here, but I think Bootstrap doesn't have that. I don't know. Panels. Yeah, click. Hmm. Panels look nice. Panels look nice. Okay. <clears throat> Panels with heading looks nice. So I'm going to put uh, the ingredient name here and the uh, ingredients over here. You can always use accordion, but I don't know why accordion is not there in Bootstrap. Accordions are something like this, you know. But I think you can do the same thing with uh, sorry. Yeah. I think we're gonna do the same thing with this, like this. Oh yeah, it's fine. So for now let's uh, do do directly this. Okay, let's see how the API looks like. It says that panel should have a header. And inside that, you need to pass the content. Content will go to the second panel over here. OK, seems nice. OK, so um, we are good with add new model. OK, we still have a few things to implement there. Now, in my base app, I need to maintain the state, state which is responsible for rendering all this, this thing. Right, I need to have a state that will do that thing for me. So let's create a state in my app.js. Okay, I'll have a constructor and I have a super. I don't need props here because I'm not going to pass anything from app. When this dot state dot state, um, say recipes. Recipes. Yeah. Recipes, I'm going to pass it a null. Nothing, I mean, I'm just going to pass it. Just a minute, I'm, I don't have to show the model as soon as it is loaded. I want to put it false here. I want people to click it only when people want to click that. So yeah, just, just before that, let's, let's implement uh, this button here, add recipe button here. Let's quickly do that. Uh, so let's have a button, I don't know, here. For that button, I have to import that from Bootstrap library. Let import a button. Um, React Bootstrap. And implement a button here which does me add new press P. Be there, looks nice, but not so nice. So I'm gonna put uh, the prop name was VS class, if I correctly remember. Hey, let me see, I don't know. It be a success button, and this style should be a success to use this. Okay. Hello. Okay, good. Now, when I click this button, I want to. Okay. So I'm gonna because I I'm going to control that state here. Let me put. Okay, there's um one more thing we should talk about here is. Show model. I'm going to put this as false. Ah, oh, yeah. Just a moment.
Sorry about that. So yeah, we were creating a straight for showing the model. Okay, so this button have to have a on click so that you know whenever we click that the straight should go to show model. That should be false. Uh, should be true, right? I'm going to put the uh, on click this to and. Model. Mm, play model would be nice. And something I'm going to here. Call this play model. And does it have any props? So we do have any parameters here. I'm just going to put this dot set state. Uh, that that I'm going to as it starts the model and this. So basically, what will does if it is true, it will be false. If it is false, it will be true. Okay. So let us see if it is working. Go to react recipe show model true. See, if I click that. True or false? Toggling quite easy. You can always you can also do as if statement false and and put the state as true and if it is false, put it as true. I mean, but this is quite easy method approach, I guess. So you guys can hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> nice. So let's. Um, Let's pass on this show model to our model of model class. So instead of we controlling the model from our <coughs> from our thing, let us have yeah, instead of we controlling the model ourselves, let us have um, the app dot js control the model. Okay, so I'm going to put. I have put before that I have to pass on the state to the add new button. If they show the model, and I'm going to pass the state is dot state dot show model here. And I'm going to instead of this showing like this, I'm going to this instead of model showing from the state of the add new button itself, add new component itself, I'm going to uh, get attach the props. So model like this, so that uh, this button can control if it should be there or not, right? Okay. So, so we don't have any other way of canceling it right now. Why? Because let's see why this happens. So the state is true, right? The app. This is in app.js. The state. Initially, let's see what happens. Okay. So initially the state is false. Okay, we have uh, attached the the show prop of model to false. Okay, now we can open this. Add new button. Okay, no, not this. So initially show model is false. So when I click this, show model is true because if it is true, this thing whole thing gets rendered. Now, if I press cancel, okay, or something else. We are not changing the state of app.js because app.js is what sending sending the sending the prop to uh, to the add new add new component. So we have to somehow from within this add new component change the state of app.js for it to render it for it to render not a model. So. Um, okay, so. Let me again repeat this once again. App.js have a state. Okay, that state is initially false. When I click Add New Button, the state is being passed on to true. And because the state, because we are in the model, the show is uh, attached to that same 
uh, state as props because uh, we click add new button the state became true and the model is getting rendered now as we are inside add new component we cannot change the state of app.js we cannot change that no matter what we do we cannot do that okay see this uh, the state we got the props as show model equal to true even if we cancel pause nothing will happen i mean that because that is controlled by app.js itself not my admin component so how do we do this okay so how do we do that how do we ask our parent that is app.js to change it to false that this not parent dot Correct. show model will not do that sorry this dot parent dot show model will have that property right uh, no it will not have the property you, actually if you an add new you cannot access the state of app.js okay okay you can only access if app.js pass it to your child because right now see recipes i cannot access in i cannot access recipes inside add new yeah even though the state is add recipes here i cannot access them mm -hmm. i don't have that okay. because i'm only passing the proper show model i have only the immutable reference to it yes, yes. okay so so react has this concept called only one way data flow so it wants us to make the application such that there is only one way of data flow because there is no two way binding as in angular or something there is no two way binding but let's see how to do that but uh, the main th thing is let your parent handle the states for the child because your parent knows better literally but uh, parent uh, if uh, if your parent handles the state then the child would react accordingly that is a um, that is the philosophy of react but sometimes obviously we need child to be able to you know change the state of parent let's see how do we do that right now we have this situation here because once we added we cannot break it in close okay so how do we do this <clears throat> so you can pass a state to a child you can also pass a function to a child hey zuba can you hear me yeah i can hear you yeah uh, what's your question like uh, you if you want to cancel it you have to return to add a new add a new recipe right ha huh, yeah so uh, can we uh, like uh, can we change that props show model to false after clicking on the cancel button and uh, can we go to that uh, app.js after uh, Ah, uh, that that's the thing. You cannot change, you cannot change this dot prop dot motion model in add add, add new dot js. You cannot do that. Okay. So I cannot do. I cannot. For example, I cannot do this. Okay. If if we do that, okay. For suppose if we do that, that won't be reflecting in that parent. Yeah. Well, but we cannot do that. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. Props are immutable. That's the thing. Okay. So I cannot put this dot props dot show model as false here. Okay, got it. Yes. Got it. So, so there must be some other way. And yeah, I was talking about passing not only state but passing functions. Okay. So what this function does is, if suppose you would want to pass a function, the function which you have defined in your parent component. So that function if you are passing as a prop it will go to the child okay function have function has the states in it right because you are defining the function in your parent function has uh, ac accessibility to the state of the parent because only if you are defining that function in your in your parent so that's it you passed on the function from the parent to the child it goes to child and uh, you i mean whatever that operation is does it go till here then uh, if suppose 
uh, it will take any of the parameters or whatever is passed on to in this add new DOM print and bring it back to app.js. What's the point? Okay, let, let's let's do an example. Okay, this is this is this this take times to uh, this take time to understand, but this is a really good method. So let us suppose <laughs> because I want to uh, make this false when I click cancel. How do we do this? Let's see. I am going to make a function. I'm going to make a function that will say those. Model. Okay. This close model is an anonymous function because I'm having a callback, right? This close model is going to give me something. Okay, I'm going to put in app this. Okay. Now <coughs> I'm going to pass this to my add new component. Say the same name, same function name as close model equal to this dot close model. Basically, what I've what I've done is I've taken this I've taken this component uh, this function and I have passed on to add new button. I go here now as anything that gets passed on to a child is only accessible through props and all it is straight it is accessible to props and okay now i'm here i have passed on so i know that if i type if i log it over here this dot props dot what is that those model okay Lowe's model. Hmm. You see this? Why is it undefined? Why is this undefined getting 29? I brought this to 39. Okay. Hmm. So what happened is this this function was passed down. So this add new component and add new component may I'm going to pass it back. Now see whenever the render method is called this dot prop dot model. This means you are actually calling it back to the parent. Okay, this is confusing, I know. So let me let me do it with the code. So whenever cancel button is clicked, I would want to pass it. Should model close and put the set state as let me just I just try to code so you can understand better and show model state model close and when you click when you click cancel button call that pops here so, Okay, <clears throat> let's understand what is going on. So, <clears throat> in my app.js, my parent component was gross model. Okay, it does, it does not matter what this is right now. It does not matter, I think. Okay, I just have a close. I just have a function called close model. That's all. And right now, this is nothing. Okay, so right now this is nothing. And this close model, I am going to pass it to my add new component. So close this dot close model, just a function. Okay. Cool. It goes there. Now if it is in the child, it is accessible to this dot props. Now when the false when the cancel was clicked, okay, it initiated an event. Okay, this event is captured under the function called cancel button clicked. 
good now i'm going to pass i'm going to call the prop which was passed to add new here so i'm, I'm saying that this dot props a close model and i'm passing the argument the parameter as false so what it does is it is i mean this method is not called at all in this app.js until until it until the cancel button is clicked and we are passing this dot for the show model until this is clicked this particular function is not called at all you understand it so let me log it for you take something Oh, so see, this particular close model is not called at all, right? Not in app.js on your add it's not called. It is only executed when I pass the props as uh, when I actually call that function in my child, I'm saying this dot prop close model. Then what happens is this whole thing, this whole thing comes here, goes here. Execute this. Got the point? Yeah. So, can I, okay. When I click cancel, I display it. Display this. Okay, I remove the. Oh, I removed a lot of things. What is this? When I click cancel, then that particular close model uh, thing is executed. So now, because this function has the scope of the state variables, I can actually call set state. Got it? Yes, to it's clear. Yeah. Okay. Something similar to uh, uh, for people from Java or C plus plus background, we. Uh, we create uh, private variables in a different class and then we instantiate that class in a different class and if i want to change the private variable of that class i create a function in the parent class then, yeah uh, it is something like that right exactly that, that's yeah. the exact thing okay okay yeah that's the exact uh, method that which is falling over here only same yes. thing <clears throat> just because we don't have access to those, to yes. those variables yes so I, I make a callback function and then access those tables. OK, so um, we're good with add new recipe button. It's opening and closing at, a, at our will. OK, we still have to do save. <laughs> OK, let's, let's see that. OK, uh, before that, let's, um, let's make something in recipes. Uh, put an array instead. And uh, Input name and I know biryani. I'm just mocking it so that we know. And it's ing and just putting ing. It is lots of stuff. And another object. I'm having an array of objects. Name with Judy and your name. Less stuff and biryani. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we had decided to use this thing now. What is that? I think we decided to use panels, right? Panels. So panels. I'm going to use this. And uh, button M, because it is a panel, it has component called panel, which I have to import it from bootstrap. And we put the panel here. Put it here and say panel. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has invisible panel. And to put 
something inside, how to put something inside, you have to pass uh, that as a header prop, then inside the content will be the child. Okay. And this is the ingredients and header is the Look at your work. Okay, that works good. Now, to make a differentiation, probably have to do something. Uh, nothing. Okay. If I have this multiple times, I don't think that there will be space. Okay, there is space. Good. Now, uh, if I have multiple times, it's going to render the same thing again, again, again. We is there. He is not taking. Anyways. And I'm going to now I'm going I'm obviously my whole ingredients will be just a map of panels. So what I'll do instead of this ah, this is <coughs> I'm going to create a function. And I'm going to say Please see, please. please. And I'm going to return. What should I return? I should return a map, right? So if I will see recipes as parameters, I'm going to map over the recipes as normal JavaScript. And and had to be recipe recipe as first argument, then a function. I think this is absolutely clear, right? The map function. And now please <clears throat> is not correct. Recipes. Going on, problem. problem now. Okay, this is the. I'm going to write a normal map function in JavaScript. Okay, where I'm I'm mapping over this particular object recipes, and uh, what I'm returning is this particular panel. Okay, where C P. I'm going to call that one entity as recipe, and I'm going to return that as a panel. Oh, okay. Panel components. Uh, oh. Okay. Panel I should have a header. I'm going to call that a recipe. And what's the name here? Recipe dot name. Okay. Name. Panel, and here I'm going to actually add a recipe dot. What is that? What ing? Okay. E dot ing. Okay, what's wrong now? Am I unexpected token? What did I do? Hmm. I forgot this. Okay, so uh, I've made a function that will map over to my recipe object, and uh, will every for every map it will, you know, uh, throw me out a panel with that particular recipe and ingredients. So I can go ahead and delete this thing. The good thing about uh, JSX is that you can write JavaScript in your HTML. That's cool. So I'm just going to call this this dot render recipes i'm going to pass the state as it's dot state dot recipes i guess recipes yeah <clears throat> okay um so what, what i just did is 
after the React goes to this thing, it will it'll go over here and attach this particular function over here. So here, right? What happened? Okay. Okay, and then also it should have a unique map in it. A key, so I'm going to just put key as and we are. I just put index, I think. Key. It is not good and change. So, in between, unique, I'm guessing. Okay, so, um, uh, any questions still now? I'm good. Okay. I'm too. Yeah. Okay. So good. Uh, we are now. We just have to do. Just have to when you add new something, and I have to take this state variables and. That's all. Good. Now, how do you do that? Hmm. Let's implement on click for submit. On click. Again, and I will just give a function right now. This dot add new press cp cp make your function here should be before cancel. I can put it anywhere, but I'm just putting it to cancel. Add new recipe because this is a uh, event. Function I have to put is as a callback function. So I'm going to put as a callback. Okay. <clears throat> Add new recipe. What should I do here? If you see, um, the recipe state, which is there in the app.js, contains two arrays. Two objects in an array. Now again the same problem. I am in add new, <laughs> and I cannot add anything in my state of my parent. How do we do that? Simple. Just pass on the just pass on the function, right? So see, my I don't have a, I I don't think I need this show model anywhere. I don't think I need that. Creating confusion. Because I'm handling that show through those app state itself. So, so yeah. So once again, uh, recipe recipes state is in my parent, and if I add something here, uh, if I add something here, it doesn't go to the parent. It goes to the state of add new. Somehow wants to attach this particular state to my app.js state. Because that will render the recipes there. Okay. Good. Okay. So, how do we do that? Let's see. Are you familiar with ES6 uh, spread operators? I think you guys are familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. Spread, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm going to use that spread operator here because it's Quite easy. Um, so what I really want to do is, so uh, I, I know I now know that I have to pass a function to get the state of add new j uh, of uh, add new a component and append it to my app.js state. I know that. So uh, how do you deal this? Uh, so how do you start with this? Is you assume okay? You just assume that you're getting a callback here altogether. Okay, you just assume that. So I'll say add new. I mean, I uh, I'll just say what is it? Add new recipe click should be there, I think. Detect and wait, this makes sense. So recipe. So, um,
So I'm I'm assuming that uh, I have passed that to our new JS. Okay, I'm getting something back. That's it. Okay. So just just because this is easier way to visualize. So what I'm saying that okay, if you before even starting out to pass it to the you know add new button, just assume that you have already passed it to it, and now you have got the response back to it. That was the response back. Okay. So what I what I actually would do when I get a uh, you know when I get this name and stuff back, I'll actually append it to my state. So I'll say this dot check state, and I would say this uh, cannot recipe equals spread operator um, or a syntax for spread operator. Spread operator, yes. Okay, I have to first place that and then dot dot dot. Okay. So, um, so I have to append it to this this dot this dot state dot recp comma. Now I'm assuming that I've received recipe back. So I'll just pass on that new recipe. Mm -hmm. And this recipe, I've re let's assume that I've received it from my ID.js. So, <clears throat> oh, I have to end it like this. So dot, 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 because I'm appending to that, and I'm appending the new recipe. OK. So what I'm trying to do is I've, I've assumed that I'm getting the new recipe from my ID.js, and I'm appending to my Existing state. Okay. Now let's pass on this function. Add new. Okay. Start. What is that? Uh, huh. So I should uh, I should call this uh, function when I should. When I should only click so save, right? Makes sense. So I should only call this function when I'm saving. Okay. Now uh, I can. How do I pass? I mean, the the structure of this this particular state has to match exactly this. Then only join. Or else, if they join also, then I, I will not able to you know map through them like this because I am specifically mapping to them with the name recipe dot name and recipe dot range. So obviously the object structure which I'm going to pass back to my uh, function over here, which uh, this this object structure has to be exactly the same as this particular object. Okay, let me copy that again. I'm going to create an object. I'm going to say object a new recipe equals to and. Uh, Okay, new recipe is this <laughs> of name here. I should have. Remember, I'm storing the the name and everything in my state like this recipe name. So I've got to append that here. This dot state dot recipe name, and same thing goes here, which is this dot state dot recipe ingredients. Okay. Before moving forward, let's see if you're actually getting that. See if you're getting an object called new recipe. Every time I'm clicking add new. So obviously, I'm not doing any verification here, but you might want to do verification if it's empty or not, stuff like that. Oh, good. We're getting object. See? Ink and name. That is exactly like this, I guess. Name and name. Good. Now, <coughs> Can you guys tell me what I should do now? Yeah, just save it, right? Change the uh, from here when you click on save, uh, 
uh, write a function in app.js saying uh, whatever you get from here save it into mm-hmm. that state i've already did that i've already made a function that will save but yeah nothing uh, to do actually like uh, we have done everything and uh, react will take care of uh, that uh, updated uh, recipe except one thing except one thing <laughs> you're, you're not closing the model no i am that's fine i can close it anyways then what else um, yeah that's that's a correct point i am not closing a model one more thing you have to close and then you have to update the panel right the behind panel panel will get updated but no panel will be updated by that uh, added recipes that is yeah, not yeah. yeah that is not a point um, see i am not passing that i am not calling the method how, uh-huh. how, how can this method execute <laughs> okay yeah yeah Yeah. yeah. So this dot props dot. Uh, what is that? Add new recipe. New recipe and pass on the object new recipe. And That's as and Asir was saying, I also have to close it. But yeah, I have to pass that props also. Close model. And false. No, I don't know. Oh, we have something. <laughs> uh, converted undefined to null object. Okay. How exactly is this word operator? Is it not the correct way? Yeah. Word operator. Mm-hmm. Okay, this has to be first, I guess. Ah, uh-huh. oh, what is that? What is that, man? Am I doing this thing correctly or what? Mm. I'm sorry, maybe the dot so that's not a little bit too bad. This is wrong completely, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. This is correct. I mean, it is um, taken in array, and I have a link to that.
Hmm, I'm getting it. One, two, three. Hmm. Why does it not work here? Then let's see what's going on. Abba. Yes, it is. Good, we got the city. Okay, it works. <laughs> so, any questions till now? No, Zubay. I think this is a good recipe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could do again a lot of things here. See, uh, because this state is managed. Uh, as mm -hmm. soon as you click add new, you have to clear the scripts because I don't want again the same to be there. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, then you can add verification checks over here and stuff like that. But yeah, so um, so I hope this was useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, it is pretty useful. Okay, I uh, um. I see. Are you okay with this? Oh, I think he left. Okay. <clears throat> oh, did he left? Awesome. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you share that core? Let's go with that. <laughs> okay. I will I'll put a GitHub link. Yeah, sure. In the, you're, in, you're in the WhatsApp group or something? Yeah, I'm in WhatsApp group. Yeah, I'll share the link there. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for thank your time. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.